my name is Julian Benoit. Uh, I am from France, but I actually work in South Africa. Uh, I'm a paleontologist at the University of the Witwatersrand uh, in Johannesburg. And my, uh, so I got my PhD in paleontology in 2013. And uh, since then I've been working in the field and uh, my, I am an expert in, um, in osteology using uh, tomographies, uh, more particularly the, the, the brain case and the skull in general. So the, the scan I received, which I don't know the, the source, by the way, I, I was just the last, uh, the last uh, person in a long chain of correspondent. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the scans I received, uh, basically the, no, the, the quality was not enough. Uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, we like to use, we like to have like 1000 slides for a workable scan doesn't mean it's the best but uh, 1000 slides is the is the minimum and uh, these ones most of them are just a few hundreds so there was only one scan that was actually uh, really workable yes so so i was a bit frustrated because the there was no there was no good quality scans uh, in the in those scans that I worked that I worked with, so I went on the I went to find a video of these good quality scans and converted them into pictures so that I can work with them, and um, and then I made a, a high quality reconstruction of the hand. And what struck me was that first there is a bone called the trapezium and this trapezium uh, is the bone where the thumb articulates uh, so maria does have a trapezium so it's uh, it's in yellow on the picture uh, on the right side so that bone is the bone where the thumb is supposed to articulate and so maria has a, a place to articulate a thumb but it doesn't have the, the finger itself. So that's that was the first clue that Maria was a fifth finger uh, individual whose thumb was uh, cut off. And the second thing was the the you could see because of the high resolution you could see the tendons on the on the palm of the hand and these tendons uh, you can count you can count them and they are you're supposed to find three tendons only if Maria was uh, three-fingered and instead we find five tendons which means that there used to be five fingers in Maria so the, that's definitely evidence that Maria had five, five fingers and two of them were cut off very important to note that the, these tendons are are still in place if, the, if Maria was alive or at least was dead recently when these tendons were cut the tendons would have moved they would have retract pulled off the hand but uh, since they are there it means that they were already mummified when the the fingers were cut yeah. so so that exclude that uh, the that uh, cutting the fingers was part of a ritual or anything I think there are there are three main features. First, the the skull. So the skull, uh, I could uh, extract the shape of the brain out of the skull, and the shape of the brain first is inconsistent with the the position of the face. So the brain is on the, I mean it's in the wrong side. The back is at the front, and the front is at the back, and the the brain also is exactly the same as the one of a llama. So it's an animal brain. It's not, a, it's not something that is unknown to us. It's actually the, the brain of an animal and it's a llama. The second thing is the ribs. So the, the ribs are perforating the, 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 the vertebra. So, the, so if these uh, little mummies if these little mummies used to be living beings, 
they would have their they would have had their spinal cord completely perforated from all along the all along their their backbone so that's very uh, i mean that's very compelling evidence that these were not living uh, functional living beings and the last thing is the the uh, the, the way the vertebral colon articulate with the skull so the the vertebral colon either the vertebral colon obliterates the hole for the spinal cord so again that's not something you would find in a functional functioning animal or you you clearly can see a stick inside the spinal cord to hold the the head on top of the vertebral colon so on top of the backbone Yes, so I've studied uh, dinosaur eggs uh, using CT scanning, so I know exactly what a, what a fossilized egg looks like when I see one uh, on a CT scan. And uh, these, these things that they call eggs on, this, uh, on, on the small mummies, they are just too dense. So an egg is just a shell with soft tissue inside there's not even bone inside because the embryo is not already ossified so it's just a shell with soft tissue inside so what you should see on these eggs is just a dense layer uh, corresponding to the shell and inside it should be dark on the CT scan that's not what you see on these CT scan what you see on these CT scans um, are uh, very big very dense uh, nodules and uh, these these are even more dense than the bone itself so to see through them you have to to put more power than to see through the bones so the those eggs are definitely not eggs they, they are just something much more dense much more thick than uh, than eggs uh, otherwise, if they were eggs, they would be similar to the bone, and you would see them right. Uh, you could see through right ahead. So, so these things, I think, they are stones. They are just piece of rocks uh, because they are just too. Yeah, they, they should not be opaque uh, uh, on X-rays. The the brain you. The human brain varies 25% around its average. So, so the average is 1,400 cubic centimeter of volume. And, uh, and there's a 25% margin around that. So Maria is well within the margin of human variation. So that's an argument that seems to come quite often. Yeah. So it's just one more. <laughs> one, really? more uh, one more reason not to believe that uh, these... Uh, creatures are anything but human.